Hello again everyone, welcome to a guide for tier 3 of The Reckoning. I'll be giving some tips on how to beat it flawlessly and how to efficiently farm it for that spicy hand cannon or any of the other weapons available in tier 3. From what it looks like, some of the weapons are split between tier 2 and tier 3. I don't have any official list, but for my 10 runs in tier 3 I got Doomsday Grenade Launcher, got that twice, and got the Bug Out Bag SMG as well, whereas my team and I managed to pick up the Soul Survivor Sniper the Lonesome Sidearm, and the Night Watch Scout Rifle from Tier 2. Tier 3, though, is worth farming for the hand cannon alone because this thing is basically Midnight Coup 2.0 with the right rolls. So with Tier 3, you gotta be 680 power or higher to even get in the event, which makes total sense since this is a match-made activity. Just like before, the Weekly Singe and two daily modifiers are active and still play a large role in your success or failure. Keep an eye on those. Heavyweight will definitely make this a lot easier, but so will your power, so get as high of a level as you possibly can for this and take advantage of the weekly singe. 1k voices and sleeper simulant are probably going to be your best two options for heavy weapons this week, and even Wardcliff coil is so good against the boss. Come Tuesday things will switch over to arc singe for the week, and I can safely say Wardcliff coil and maybe Thunderlord are going to be the only two heavy weapons you should be using. When it comes to subclasses, things are mostly going to stay the same as in tier 2. You want a Night Stalker with Orpheus Riggs, a Top Tree Nova Bomb with Skull of Dire Ahamkara, and either a Well of Radiance Warlock or a Sentinel Titan with the Bubble. Tether for adds, Well or Bubble for survival, and one or two DPS supers to hold off the mini bosses. Blade Barrage is pretty good since it is Solar Singe, but I still prefer using Nova Bomb because it feels like you get your super back a lot easier with that. The best tip I can give to all you Slova Bomb Skull users out there is to try and get your Nova Bomb to be the finishing blow to a mini boss. If you launch it at a really tanky dude, and he doesn't die, well, it'll shred his health, but you won't get any energy back. You always want to try and have your teammates do at least a third or more of his health before you go for the Nova Bomb. Some of the mini bosses are weaker than others, so you can easily get away with insta-killing them, but enemies like the Vex Minotaurs and even the Ogres are so tanky that it pays to wait a few seconds before using your super. The best possible combo you could pull off here, regardless of Singe, is to have the mini bosses be tethered and then go for the Slova Bomb. That's the most optimal way of dealing with them. If you're brave enough, you can all hunker down in a bubble. That will definitely protect you from the ground pound of the enemies and the snipers, of course. But moving on to the next section of the bridge can get risky if you're surrounded while inside. The opening of the door section is exactly the same as it was in Tier 1 and 2. Just kill the dudes to raise the dominance and you're in. Funny enough, this is actually the part I had the most trouble with when trying to go flawless. So if you have a Well of Radiance Warlock on your team, have them immediately pop their super in a place where you have lots of visibility and can take out the deadly snipers. Move as a team or at least as a pair of two here. If you combo the tether and nova and use the well as a safe spot, you can very easily get past this section. Do not get close to any of the mini bosses here. That is almost a guaranteed death. So keep your distance and use supers often. Also, don't be afraid to hide, the opening sequence gives you plenty of time, so take a minute and recover if you need to. For the bridge section, things are pretty much the exact same except instead of 40 seconds for every section you have only 35. Doesn't sound like that much of a difference, but it is. There is pretty much going to be no recovering from a team wipe here or even getting knocked out of the circle for more than 5 or so seconds. You want your team to be huddled on this point at all times. One thing that can give you a little bit of an edge is if one of your players from the group starts running ahead when you've captured about 90% of the circle, you can get a few seconds head start on capturing the next section while your team catches up and while the enemies are still spawning in. When it comes to getting through this part flawlessly, it's really going to be up to how fast you can clear the mini bosses or at least keep them at a distance. You'll either get stomped off or melted if they are alive too long, so if you can coordinate clearing at least the ones in front of you, you shouldn't have too much of an issue here. Really the hardest part of tier 3 is doing enough damage to the final boss. Speaking of the final boss, I was surprised to learn that even though we got this voice line in the activity, Shades of the King and his son await you. Relish this chance to slay them twice. That we'd only be facing Oryx. I thought for sure we'd be squaring off in a sword battle against Crota or something, but maybe there's a secret heroic version because why would that be a voice line? I really am confused. But to defeat this shade of Oryx, all you really gotta do is shoot him in the face. My advice for this encounter is to have your warlock pop the well over here to the left of the arena on top of this block. This way you always have a line of sight to where Oryx is teleporting, and you can always damage him. 
The only real mechanic in this fight is he's going to start a countdown for this thing called Counterfeit Gaze, which is an attack that will pretty much kill you unless you're standing in a well or in a bubble. Although I'm pretty sure you can survive it if you're high enough level and have full health. All you have to do to prevent this from happening is just damage him enough. Every time he teleports to a new gold platform, which by the way don't step on them because they will drain your super, he's going to spawn in a pair of ogres. These are the, probably the deadliest enemies here in this entire arena besides Oryx himself, so if you can tether them and take them out quickly, you'll be able to relax and focus more on damage and won't get launched off the platform. This fight is really going to come down to how much power ammo you have, so do your best to hoard it up to this point. Don't be afraid to use cover here as well. You can hide for a minute if you think you're going to die and there isn't a well or a bubble available, but you have to be aware of the counterfeit gaze timer so that you know when to focus and fire on the boss. Everyone should be shooting him at this point to prevent this attack from happening, because it will end a lot of people's flawless runs. If you're all higher levels and want to try it out, besides having everyone use 1k voices, you can also get up close to Oryx's spawn point, pop down a well and have someone melting point him, and then everyone uses Wardcliff Coil. This will no doubt be the strategy for farming next week, but I thought I'd share it with you now just in case you're looking for the quickest method to run and farm tier 3. The activity is very short. If you get some good enemies, you can be looking at a 5 minute run or less. And the more you level up, the easier it's going to be to farm for the hand cannon. If you manage to get a good roll, let me know in the comments what it was, and if you have any questions on the mode, please feel free to ask. Fingers crossed we'll see a Crota fight in the near future, but until then, thank you everyone for watching.